And welcome to Bistec Health and Wellness Show presented by IGN, the National Heart Institute of Malaysia. The show where we focus on equipping you with knowledge on health and wellness to help you ensure a more productive and healthy lifestyle for yourself, your family, and your employees. I'm Dr. Selina, and today the conversation is about adapting to the COVID endemic telemedicine. And to bring us insights on this topic, we have Dr. Raymond Choi, co-founder and CEO of Doc2Us. Now, Doc2Us is one of Malaysia's leading telemedicine platform. Welcome to the show, Dr. Raymond. Hi, Selina. Thank you very much for having me. Hi, so Dr. Raymond, can you give us an overview of your professional background as well as what Doc2Us does? Okay. Um, let, let me bring you through, uh, you know, who, who am I, right? So, uh, uh, Professionally, I'm a medical practitioner, so uh, born and bred in Malaysia, and, and subsequently, you know, uh, and, uh, blessed enough to to go to you know the UK to continue my my medical degrees and and did my training a few years over there in Oxford, and and then subsequently I went to Singapore to continue my my practice for for seven years uh, as a medical practitioner. So that's my background as a medical practitioner for more than ten years, and you know during my tenure in Singapore. Uh, uh, you know, um, because I think I'm sure you, you and I also will, will agree that you know, as a medical practitioner, a lot of your friends and families, you know, always come to you and ask about general medical related questions, right? And you know, those days that yet you that used to send us, you know, those days I was in the UK, you know, SMS, right? And then subsequently to WhatsApp to even video call, and you know, then it just got me thinking one day, right? That what if those people without such access, right? Where do they go to? Do they go to the clinic or hospital or Google? Which sometimes might not be personalized or even reliable, and hence because of that, that actually you know uh, uh you know you know uh, started you know having this kind of a thought of you know why don't we create a platform for people in Malaysia to really you know uh, engage and be connected to the healthcare providers so that they can actually get their questions answered in a more professional and evidence based manner. So so we actually founded the company back in twenty fifteen. And why do we call a doc to us? Because we really want patients to talk to us, right? You want patients to talk to us. That's why it sounds like, you know, talk to us. Uh, so talk to us. So we found a company in 2015 and, and as a first time founder and uh, with no business acumen, no experience in, in business. So we took, uh, you know, 20 odd months, you know, honeymoon to actually build the app, right? So we knew we wanted to build the app, right? Uh, so that you can actually have a platform to connect you know, uh, patients to healthcare providers. And without the technical background, right? And, you know, because uh, my co-founder is a, is a business side, right? The corporate side. So this is where, you know, he can actually fill up my, my shortcoming, right? My skill set gap. Um, but at the same time, I have another skill set gap, which is the, the technical side, right? You want to build an app, you need a, you know, developer. So we actually, you know, engage with our, uh, uh, one of the top developers in Malaysia, Atmos Studio. And I, I pitched to, to him. Uh, we sent a proposal to him, you know, and, and you know, one week later he called me back, and, and for just a quick, quick chat. I remember I was pitching to him one week later on an ambulance. I was on on standby. I was on standby, right? I was I, I used to work in the in, in Singapore airport, which is a twenty four hour medical center. So I was on standby, actually, you know, waiting for a flight to come in. Who, uh, you know, there was one uh, patient unwell on board, right? So I was with my paramedic, with my nurse in the in the ambulance, but the the flight was, you know, I think one or two hours. You know, late right delay. So we were in the in the tarmac. So you know, uh, uh AK, the 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 CEO of Emma Studio call and say, you know, we are very interested in healthcare uh, portfolio. Do you want to tell me more about your idea? So in the ambulance, I took you know fifteen minutes to pitch to him about talk to us. Then they got excited, and and then because of that, we joined venture. And he being part of our you know uh, shareholder, and from there we actually built the system and the app, and and you know uh luck. You know, luckily, actually, in the end, we launched it in 2017. So we have been in the market for, for four years. And, and for Talk to Us, we first started as a you know, telemedicine platform back in 2017, where we offer online consultation services to the patients in the public segment. And, and of course, back in 2017, that was BC time, right? Before COVID time, right? So during the BC time, right? And, and you know, people actually did not know the value of online consultation because in Malaysia, right? Uh, you know, going to clinics or hospitals is actually not a big issue in major cities, right? So accessibility is not the, the problem, it's not the pain point. 
And why would people, you know, spend money on online and might not even get a single pill of Panadol? So we were a few steps ahead of the general population and the traction wasn't that great, right? And because of that, a few months later, we realized we can't continue to provide what we provide, right? So hence, we have to pivot. So, you know, a few months later, we pivoted to serve the B segment. So we are fortunate enough to actually, you know, work with uh, the very first uh, pharmacy partner who actually believed in digital health. And that was, you know, uh, L Pro Pharmacy chain. At that time, there were only 30 plus uh, outlets strong, right? So, you know, the, the, the CEO believed in this. And I remember, you know, they came all the way to Singapore after I sent the deck to the, to the, to the, to the HQ. They came to Singapore and then we had a chit chat, you know, at the Starbucks. And from there, we built the relationship that, you know, we want to work this together to disrupt the whole, you know, uh, you know community care uh, level in terms of pharmacy. So hence, we actually built a pharmacy solution, incorporated telemedicine element into the pharmacy, right? In, what, what does that mean is actually, right now, all the pharmacy partners that we have, you go in, you have a virtual doctor with the pharmacies to serve the clients. And we have the, you know, uh, doctors, you know, readily available to actually prescribe on the spot for the walk-in patients in all our ph partner pharmacies. So to date, um, we have more than 600 partner pharmacies, including Alcro Pharmacy, who grew exponentially, uh, as well as Watson's, you know, Big Pharmacy, AMPM Pharmacy, uh, uh, and, and we are on target for 1,000 pharmacy network by end of this year. And these are all our subscribing pharmacy who actually believe in the digital prescribing and digital dispensing solution. And because of that, 2018, uh, you know, uh, we actually, you know, uh, of the B segment that we serve, we are fortunate enough to actually, you know, serve the corporate clients. Our very first corporate client uh, uh, was uh, Hong Leong Bank. At that time, none of the corporate clients in Malaysia were using telemedicine for their medical benefits of their employees. And that's a bit few steps ahead, right? Because you go to the panel clinic to see doctor, right? And, and, and Hong Leong Bank was brave enough to, to take on the, you know, the, 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 the challenge, right? And because they saw the values in, 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 in telemedicine, in telehealth, right? And of course, in partnership with the MyK, the third party administrators to make this work. And first year, 2017, when we rolled out, we only did uh, less than 500 e-prescription whole year, right? And 2018, the second year, we started serving, you know, uh, pharmacy as well as Hong Leong Bank. We actually recorded 5.5K e-prescription that year. So that's quite a good uh, significant jump, right? And 2019, because there was more corporate clients, they saw Hong Leong Bank, they saw more pharmacy. So we actually served more corporate clients, um, more insurers uh, uh, clients, as well as uh, more pharmacy. In 2019, actually, we grew to almost 90,000 e-prescriptions generated that year. And last year, because of pandemic outbreak, uh, we actually grew more than 160% to more than 232,000 e-prescriptions. And what does this that year, signify for you? I mean, the you know surpassing that 500k e prescription mark. What, what does that signify for doctors? Well, one I think that's a very good question, right? One is actually it's it, it means uh, the adoption rate has improved, has increased not only from the pharmacy but also from the consumer, which is the employee and the public patients. And two is when you have so much of e prescription in your database, we actually have a better insight and analytic and to understand. The behavior of patients towards their medication and their compliance and this is what we are working on and even though as we speak right now you know every one minute we are actually generating one deep prescription by our online doctors right and 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 because of the cloud computing we partner with uh, microsoft uh, microsoft asia we're able to scale up so fast right to actually onboard one to two pharmacy outlets every day right with this actually we are able to actually you know build a very solid you know uh, uh, network pharmacy right, to, to better serve our clients, to better serve our patients in terms of the last mile delivery, uh, dispensing part, and also, you know, uh, patients' education on the medications and its related matters. And, and hence, surpassing these 500,000 e-prescriptions, you know, uh, I think it's very crucial for us uh, and, and it validates what we, we, we believe in initially, and, and, you know, and we grew, you know, uh, slowly, but surely that, you know, people started to see you know, the values of digitalization, especially when it comes to prescribing and dispensing, you know, all this while you and I are practitioner, we, we used to do paper and pencil, right? And you yes. and I know that there's so many, you know, problems about that, right? The communication gap, uh, the, the, you know, the how clear is your message to the nurse, 
right? Yeah, to, for the you know, writing, it, the doctor's writing as yeah. well. <laughs> I'm not sure about you, right? I'm very guilty about it sometimes, right? Because doctors are always very, you know, busy, right? They see so many patients in the hospital clinics. Hence, their writing has to be fast. And then so fast, mm -hmm. sometimes it looks like worms. Yes. Right? And that might compromise the, the patient safety and the drug safety. So when yeah. we have a proper system, you know, everything clearly stated, right? That, you know, Panadol, how many doses, how many days, it's clearly stated, you know, communicated around the ecosystem in real time, right? I think that is very powerful. Yeah, and this is what we have been doing to digitalize the whole dispensing and prescribing processes. Yeah. Who, who are your other key providers that are providing this e-prescription services and how have their presence in, in this uh, ecosystem uh, contribute to helping you build that awareness and therefore the acceptance of this e-prescription among Malaysians, like what you mentioned earlier? Yeah, thanks for the question. I think uh, with one party like ourselves, definitely we cannot, you know, do on our own and we cannot roll out to this big uh, definitely is a, a multi-sectorial you know, uh, sectorial, uh, uh, involving so many stakeholders. For instance, the pharmacy stakeholders. So they have to believe in this because they do not need to... This is not a need, uh, right? For them, this is... They've been dispensing, you know, with the paper prescriptions, right? All this while. Why do I need to pay, you know, to disrupt my own practice, right? Right? And, and someone need to ask more questions on the patient side when they walk in, all this. So we created the need for them. Right, we actually make it more uh, legitimate, uh, you know, uh, uh, clearer and safer in terms of drug dispensing. Right, so pharmacy is a very, very important stakeholder. The second stakeholder is actually the policy maker, right? And in terms of policy maker, with Ministry of Health, with MCMC, you know, uh, our e prescription is in full compliance to the Poison Act as well as the, you know, the e prescription where requiring a digital signature system. And we were the first one in the market that actually offers such solution that is in full compliance with the Ministry of Health when it comes to e-prescriptions, right? Right now, there are other two players who are actually in compliance using the digital signature system, right? And, and third, of course, uh, you know, the digital signature system provider, where in this, in this space, we actually work closely with Trustgate uh, MSC, which is accredited by MCMC, right? And, and fourth, of course, insurer company, who actually believe in this and, and patients, Right, as far as the pharmaceutical companies. So we work closely with pharmaceutical companies. So in the ecosystem, they are all the P's, right? So we have a payor, right? Patients, providers, right? As well as policy maker. So we definitely, in short, we work with these four P's. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a lot of people are involved in, in growing this. It's really yeah. interesting to hear this. So how has doctors played a role in the battle against COVID-19 in Malaysia? Okay. Uh, yeah, as a telemedicine player, you know, since 2017, uh, that was before COVID, right? Uh, so we have been, you know, paving ourselves into raising awareness on telemedicine online consultation. It was a very tough journey because no one knows what's telemedicine. They don't know what is the values of it. Why, you know, how would you examine the patient through phone, through video consult, right? So all of these questions, skepticism, all this, right? And because of COVID-19, actually, you know, um, and, and due to the lockdown, right? People are not able to go out, but they need to refill prescriptions, right? That's where they find alternatives, right? And hence, you know, they actually found telemedicine. Hence, you know, the, 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 the adoption rate during pandemic outbreak actually skyrocketed. You know, in China, it, it, it was as high as 900%. Some of the players wow. in 900% adoption during pandemic outbreak on telemedicine, that's crazy, right? And, and in Southeast Asia, for instance, Indonesia or Singapore is as high as, you know, 150% on average, right? For ourselves, we're looking at, you know, 70 to 90% during this pandemic outbreak in terms of adoption. We are not, not as fast as, you know, like China uh, and other countries, all right? But definitely, I think we are moving towards that in the, you know, shorten the process in about two years' time. So during this pandemic outbreak, right, and because of the telemedicine and, you know, we actually in March uh, last year, we rally more than you know 120 over uh, voluntary healthcare providers to step forward to offer you know free virtual health advisory to public uh, to provide you know online real time messaging services using our platform, right? So this is a free services 24/7 offer since last year March, right? Because when we first started in March, right, people were wondering what is actually COVID-19, right? Those were the questions we were, we were asked, right? And uh, how was it, you know, contracted? You know, should I wear masks? You know, our public health definitely needs a lot of, you know, improvement, right? So there's so many questions about COVID-19. And as we go in June, July, 
uh, and, you know, different questions arise because people start started to get used to it. So in July, actually, uh, uh, we, we were quite blessed and that, you know, we, we worked with the Ministry of Health and we integ integrated with the MySajatra on our virtual health advisory in the digital health side uh, uh, to provide continuous kind of a virtual health advisory to the public, even till right now today. So, um, so since last March until now, we have clocked more than 1.7 million hours on providing virtual health advisory to the public in Malaysia on COVID-19 related matters. So even till right now, we are still answering them questions. There was a period there people asked about vaccine, right? And now actually people are asking more on, uh, um, you know, quarantine at home. Uh, a lot of them are, are positive. They, they, they need some answers. Uh, they, they're not sure about, you know, whether their family needs to be, you know, checked or not, right? So we, we act as a bridge between, you know, uh, Ministry of Health and the patient because sometimes there might be some backlog due to the overwhelming load, right? For the government, none of the government in the, in the world are right, able to deal with thousands of cases a day, mm -hmm. right? So we are trying to step up, right, and to to provide these services to 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 shorten the gap, as well as to to try to reduce some of the loads of a uh, KKM, the Ministry of Health, and, and this is what we our, our little contribution to the country, and this is all uh, voluntary service, you know, as a platform provider, we don't pay our healthcare providers. What we 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 did, we sell them the the mission statement. Right, really, you know, everyone, you know, if you are free, come and help, right? So we are, we are quite blessed to have, you know, more than 120 over from specialists like ID, infectious disease, you know, specialists, all the way to GP, dentists, nurses, you know, really want to come and help. And we have a task force check group, right? Whichever that you're not sure about the latest protocol, we always have people uh, to help, right? Hence, we are giving out, you know, um, evidence-based, you know, uh, information, uh, the latest updated, you know, information to the public. And this is all for free. It's all available in your mindset, etc. Under digital health, you can find talk to us there. The last part will be, uh, we were blessed enough to actually, you know, work with government and to 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 help setting up, you know, uh, PPV, uh, you know, a vaccination center. So uh, in in June we started with one mega PPV in uh, in Satya City, uh, and subsequently actually we work with the uh, different, you know, uh, Selangor government as well on the Southwest program. So we have actually, you know, managed more than forty. For the PPVs, uh, vaccinating more than eight hundred thousand uh, doses uh, for the people in Malaysia, and and these are all the uh, small little efforts and initiative that we we try our best as a startup, as a health tech startup, to 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 fight against the uh, infection with the people and with the government as well. Yeah. Well, kudos to you and your team. I mean, to be able to rally the entire um, country together, you know, all the healthcare providers together to really fight this. Because I, I do agree with you that the government could not have done it all by themselves. I mean, nobody can. So it's a very good job what, what you guys did, you know. But now that we're moving to, towards living with uh, COVID-19 as an endemic, how do you think telemedicine will can and will complement the current ecosystem and with the adoption from the healthcare providers, you know, that there's a bit of resistance, you know, mostly from healthcare providers as well, you know, how, how they think we must see the patient and touch them. So what, what do you think this, how, how do you think this can complement? Yeah, I think that's a very tough question on your second part. Let me answer your first part first, right? Um, I think, yeah, you, you're absolutely right, right? So COVID-19, uh, we are working towards the endemic era Right, so you know, interstate uh, travel allowed now. Right, economy opening. You know, a border is going to be open very soon. Right, so so then you know, the million dollar question is, how can digital health solution right continue to to thrive? Right, and and, and you know, uh, my in my opinion is the awareness and the the values. Uh, um, actually, people already realize how good and what can the digital health or telemedicine can do. Right. So definitely there will be some, some changes uh, when people are able to go back to, to, to school, go back to work, right? And, and you know, they are able to visit their, their GPs or the specialists, right, in real. Uh, definitely there will be some, some uh, 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 dip in terms of adoption. But I think uh, not only me, I think across all the telemedicine players, I think we are very positive in the future, uh, which shows in other countries, right, that, you know, people actually, you know, uh, continue to, to adopt the, the, the solution because uh, you know it's more convenient and, and it's, it's more cost effective more accessible more available right and it's really about how you actually can bring up more value to patients outside the clinic and hospitals we are not here to replace the hospital and clinics 
right? We are here to, to take care of the patients remotely outside the clinic and hospitals. And how can we continue to bring these patients back to the clinic and hospitals with the more standardized data back to the clinic and hospital for the benefits of the patients, right? And the providers, of course, um, yeah. But again, like you pointed out, right? And, you know, uh, providers, healthcare providers, because it's not in our training all this while, mm-hmm. right? We are very analog, right? If I may put it that way, right? Our practice, our, our training has been very analog, right? Traditional medicine, right? So to speak. Uh, uh, hence, to move them into the different mindset, it takes time, right? Uh, um, of course, there are, uh, there are early adopters. They are, you know, those people who follow the herd. And of course, there are late, late adopters, right? And, and definitely, it's really about awareness and education. It's like we, 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 we bring you a kid, we bring a kid right? Uh, a bicycle, a two-wheel bicycle. We ask them to cycle. They will not be able to cycle. You show them how to cycle, they will still be skeptical whether they can balance or not. Right, you can give them a lot of manual SOPs, right? You know, this is how you cycle, but they will never be able to cycle until they hop on the bicycle, they try, right, with the supervision in the control environment. Even when they fall, they won't, you know, bleed severely. It's still within the control environment. They need to feel it before they learn it, right? Only then they'll be able to master it. So likewise for telemedicine is the same because from far they see a lot of skepticism, you know, how can you, you know, check a throat? How can you, you know, uh, diagnose remotely, right? It's really about awareness and education. A lot of things that we can't do, there are a lot of limitations. But once you understand the limitations, actually, you know, telemedicine can do wonders, right? And, and, and that's why we believe in the hybrid care. How can we bring online to offline, offline back to online? And if that works very well, this hybrid care model will be the maximal benefit to the patients and the providers. So hence, I think we need a lot of hand-holding uh, with our healthcare providers together. We are not going to leave anyone behind, but it takes time. Different, different group of uh, healthcare providers at different timing, right? But we just need to continue to educate and to tell them how to cycle, but you need to hop on and we, we, we cycle together. We handhold together and you will be able to, to, to understand and master telemedicine and the beauty part of it. Yeah, I'm not sure if I answer your question, but uh, this is how I see it, yeah. Yeah, you, you are right. It sounds like there's um, a lot of hand-holding. Even when we first started out uh, our medical journey, also, it was a lot of hand-holding. You, know, you do something and then you look behind and ask your specialist whether it's okay or not. So I, I guess um, what, what you're saying makes a lot of sense. So moving forward, um, you are expanding to Myanmar. So why Myanmar? Yeah, that's a very good question, right? And uh, a lot of people ask the same question. So in August this year, we actually officially you know, launched our whole Hope Telecare in, in, in Yama, working with the local partners uh, to really serve the healthcare needs uh, of the local in, 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 in Yama. And the discussion, you know, the partnership discussion actually started before the military coup, right? And, and, you know, of course, after that, you know, they have the military coup and then pandemic outbreak. And, you know, our partners and us, we decided, I think there's a dire needs of help in, a, in the healthcare segment in, in, in Yama. So hence, I think we, we, know, we, we say, you know, let's continue to do it. Uh, hence, we launched in August and it has been very promising. People started using it. And in fact, we also, uh, you know, started the, the digital certificate uh, for vaccines, in, uh, COVID vaccine in Yama as the first provider to do so, right? So, so definitely there are a lot of uh, innovations going on in Yama. Uh, and, and it's a country where, you know, healthcare uh, uh, pain points are at its maximum. So there's so many pain points that need to be solved, right? So hence, I think we, 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 we would like to see how we actually can continue to help uh, the country, you know, the Burmese people, uh, and, you know, with the help of the digital health solution, as well as replicating our current ecosystem and the business model that works for us with the hyper-localization of, Yama, uh, of the Burmese market, right? To see how we actually can continue to serve them uh, better and uh, bringing them a more affordable, accessible healthcare services. Yep. Yes, Dr. Raymond, any final thoughts um, that you'd like to leave us with before we end the conversation? Um, yeah, thanks Thanks for having me, Selena. And of course, uh, thanks to uh, Vistac Asia uh, for, for having me. You know, uh, um, and I think uh, my final thought would be, you know, um, I think everyone has been working really hard in this pandemic outbreak. Um, there's so much of sufferings, but I think, uh, we are started. We have started to see the the the, the new beginning. Uh, uh, we are seeing the, the the end of the tunnel, right? So so continue to 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 stay strong, 
And, and most importantly, I think we haven't won the pandemic outbreak yet. So continue to say, you know, to, to, to follow the SOPs and, and you know, and, and keep fighting really. So, so to, to all the healthcare providers, uh, 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 you know, salute, a big salute to you guys, the frontliners, right? And for continue to serve the country to help our patients, our people in fight with this uh, pandemic outbreak. And, and yeah, so, so uh, that's what I want to say. So stay well and stay healthy and, and we will win this fight soon. Thank you, Dr. Raymond, so much for your time to be on this show. I'm Dr. Selena Chiu, and we've been speaking to Dr. Raymond Choi, co-founder and CEO of Doc2Us, on this tech health and wellness show presented by IGN, the National Heart Institute of Malaysia. This video and podcast will be available on our social media platform and the on our website at www.bistech.asia. So please subscribe for our various, various platform. Thank you for tuning in.